So we'll be considering pressure now. Pressure is described by the equation pressure is equal to force over area, where we use capital P to represent pressure, capital F to represent the force, and capital A to represent the area. In this equation, pressure is measured in pascals, force is measured in newtons, and the area is measured in meters squared. Now, where you may have experienced pressure in everyday life is you'd be aware that if somebody wearing stilettos walks over a floor which is easy to indent, they're much more likely to cause damage and indents to the floor than somebody who is wearing flat-soled shoes. So in this case, what's happening is we've got a high pressure because there's a very small surface area on the soles of the stilettos. So the force is very concentrated onto that surface. Another thing that you may have been unfortunate enough to experience is leaving a can of soft drink in a car on a hot day. Don't try it, but if you do, you'll be aware that the can of soft drink can explode. So what's happening here is that the temperature increase within the car is increasing the pressure in the soft drink can. And then because the pressure is increasing, there's an increased force on the walls of the can, and this can cause the can to explode. So let's have a look at an example problem where we'll calculate the pressure on a diver now. So the question is, what pressure would a diver experience 2.0 meters below the surface of the water? So let's start by drawing a little diagram. Here we've got the water surface. Now we should note that above the water surface, we've got atmospheric pressure acting. So here we've got P atmospheric. And then we've got a diver down here, which is two meters below the surface. Now, it'll be helpful to model our diver here as a rectangle, and then we can picture the water, which is up above the diver. So we've got a rectangular prism a bit like this of water above the diver, and it's this water which is pushing down on the diver with its weight force, which is increasing the pressure on the diver. So we can work out the pressure due to the water above the diver using our equation, it's equal to the force divided by the area. Now the force from the water in this case is the weight force. So that'll be mg, and then we're dividing by the area. Now, because it's water, it's going to have the density of water. So we can say that the mass of the water is going to be the density of water times the volume of water times g, and we still need to divide by a. Now, the volume of water, we were modeling this diver as a rectangular prism, but we really don't have to do that. The diver's got surface area a, and then we're just interested in the volume of the water above the diver. So that's going to be the height of water times the surface area of the diver. So we can write this is going to be equal to the density times a times h g, and then divided by a. And you can see that the a's cancel out. And we have an equation for the pressure due to the water is rho hg. So we can now evaluate this. Water has a density of 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. So one liter of water weighs one kilogram. And in a cubic meter of water, there is 1,000 liters. So this is equal to 1,000 times the height, which we've said is two meters times g, which is 9.8. And solving that, we end up with 19,600 pascals. So the total pressure acting upon the diver, he's got the atmospheric pressure still acting upon him. That doesn't magically disappear, so it's still there. And so the total pressure is going to be the pressure due to the water plus the pressure due to the atmosphere, which we can write as 1.96 times 10 to the 4 and then atmospheric pressure, which is 1.01 times 10 to the 5 pascals. So adding these, we end up with 1.2 times 10 to the 5 pascals. So that's the total pressure acting upon this diver. 
So before we go on and consider pressure macroscopically, which means on everyday scales, let's consider pressure microscopically, so on the scale of molecules. So we'll do this because in mechanics, you've learned about how to calculate forces and impulses. So we can use this to come up with a microscopic definition of pressure. So picture this, we've got a molecule which is colliding with a wall. Now we're going to make the assumption that kinetic energy is conserved. If kinetic energy is conserved, it means that the speed before the collision, Vi, must be the same as the speed after the collision, Vf. Now in this case, the molecule is colliding with the wall and the wall will be exerting a force in the x direction. So we're only going to get a change in the velocity in the x direction. There's not going to be any change in the velocity in the y direction as there's no vertical forces applied. So let's calculate the force that a single molecule will exert on the wall during this collision. To do that, we'll need to use the equation for impulse. The force times the time is equal to the change in momentum. So we can rearrange this and write, well, the force is equal to the change in momentum over the time, which in this case is equal to the mass times the final velocity. And in this case, we only need to consider the final velocity in the x direction because we've said that there's no change in the velocity in the y direction. So we've got this is equal to the mass times the final velocity in the x direction minus the initial velocity in the x direction divided by time. Now, because the speed is not changing, we know that the final speed in the x direction must be the same as the final speed in the y direction. And so since they're moving in opposite directions, we must have that Vf of x is equal to minus Vi of x. So we can substitute this into our equation for force now, and we get the force of that one molecule colliding with the wall is equal to 2m times the final velocity in the x direction divided by time. So once we have the force, we can use it with the area and knowing the number of molecules which are colliding with the wall as well to calculate the total pressure on the wall microscopically. And we'll come back and look at this in more detail later. But for now, let's go and have a look at the macroscopic relationships between pressure, volume, and temperature in a gas.